Hey class, welcome back. If you check out the board behind me, I thought today would be a good time to just do a quick recap of exactly what we did in class today with the online classes. And I'll get the notes posted out there to Google Classroom and to the blog in just a little bit. Uh, this video will probably take far less than 10 minutes. In actual class time today, we took about a half an hour or so. Um, but I just want to give you a quick recap of what our notebook should look like and what we did in class. And I'm holding the basketball for that very reason. So let's jump right in. If you look at the board behind me, one of the things I asked everybody to do was making sure that you had your science notebook ready to go every day. Basically, we'll fill up two pages a day, two pages of class day. And if you look at the date, the date goes on every single page. So that makes it really easy for teachers, myself, Ms. Licata, to check out when you've done the notes or you've answered some questions on a particular day, we can refer exactly to that date. And if I ever want to do a spot check on notes here in the classroom, I'm talking from pretty much an empty classroom right now, um, I would normally be able to say, hey, everyone, open up your, your notes to this particular date. Not as easy to do with online teaching, so we can just open up to a date. You can snap a picture of it, send it in. We can do a quick note check that way. Our notes today use the outline format like this, big Roman numerals one, two, and three. Uh, it's a shout out to my old... Uh, middle school teacher, Ms. Satui, who taught, taught us how to outline way back in sixth grade. And I got to tell you, it's one of the most useful skills still in terms of organizing your work. If you look at the first thing that's up here, big Roman numeral one with an A and a B, ask students to take just two notes, one sentence notes on the website, which again, I'll link down below. Carl Azuz hosts that CNN 10, which is a nice 10 minute recap. If you look at the CNN 10 from August 24th, they do a little story about the California wildfires and for example one of the two notes might be that the wildfires that we're experiencing right now here in california were mostly caused by lightning usually wildfires this time of year uh, over 90 percent of them are caused by people uh, just being careless sparks from uh, vehicles things like that these particular wildfires were caused by uh, lightning strikes we had a lot of dry lightning the last couple of days and so just two notes on that. Once again, we do current events partly because it's a great way to keep up with how our class relates to the world as a whole. And the notes, when I ask you to take notes on a particular story, one, it shows you're paying attention to the story, but two, more importantly, it's always germane to the, in, uh, to, to the standards that we're studying at that time, the NGSS standards. And so I always make sure that the notes, if I have you take the notes on them, it's something that is part of the curriculum. Uh, moving on down here, we put a date on each page. Just mentioned that a second ago. We do left side, right side. Keeps it very straightforward. The left side will kind of be often me talking and giving notes. The right side will be more experimental type things. Might be a few more notes in there as well, but experimental type things, things from the textbook that you've read. And we start off with two really basic notes today. And most of the time, the notes are pretty straightforward. Usually in class when we talk about specific scientists, there are some names that we should make sure that we remember. And again, part of the standards too. For example, we might definitely, you know, Albert Einstein, Rosalind Franklin, uh, Charles Darwin, important names in science that we should definitely know by the time we move on to eighth grade in high school. The two today are Aristotle and Galileo. And if you look at the names that we have up here, these are the notes behind me. I will go ahead and read them to you because I'll put them up there on the Google notes, but you can see them behind me, I believe. Aristotle, around 350 BC, um, was when he was uh, writing and not really a scientist yet, but he made a lot of statements. Some got us going in the direction, for example, of uh, organizing uh, things in nature. One of the things he tried to do was organize all the living things that he knew of at the time. He would, for example, lump fish and whales in the same category. Seemed to make sense to him. They both swim. Um, not a bad way to get us going, but of course, now we know in I didn't even know at the time, but now we know, for example, whales are marine mammals, evolved a few tens of millions of years ago. Fish have been with us for well over 100 million years, and they evolved under very different uh, directions. And so if you check out Aristotle getting us going, um, it was a great start in a lot of cases, but some of the statements weren't quite correct. And the example we gave in class today was this. Aristotle used to claim that heavier objects, in other words, if you have two similarly shaped objects. I'm not talking about paper fluttering down, but I am talking about, for example, say a, a large rock and a small rock. Um, and they would fall at different rates, the heavier one falling faster than the lighter one. It seemed to make sense to him. 
Galileo comes on almost 2,000 years later and says, maybe, but let's check. Let's check with an experiment. Let's check with a test. And so in class on the screen, you might remember if you were in the uh, classes uh, so far, we've had uh, first through fourth period uh, online. We dropped two objects. We did it a couple times. I asked you to drop a couple things. I said make sure it was two uh, objects that were obviously different weights, um, inanimate objects. So you know we don't take you know our little brother or anything like that. We just make sure to take maybe a pen and a pen cap or something like that that are obviously different weights and ask students to test it to drop them. And we did. And you can't see the floor from where I'm dropping this, but I'm going to drop it anyway here with a marble and a basketball. And after we dropped it, after a couple of tests we found out, hey, wait a second, it turns out that different massed objects, different weighted objects, fall at the same rate. And that is a huge leap forward in science in terms of Aristotle might have been right, but Galileo had the presence of mind to say, well, let's do a test, let's check it out. And Galileo did a lot more than that, but that was one of our just jumping off points here too. So two names that we should definitely know in the world of science. Um, and then at some point, we switch the screens. So I'll do that right now. And notice it says right side up here. This is the right side of our notebook today. Again, the date is up there. This is 825. These would be the same notes that you saw, by the way, for 824, because we have half the classes one day, half another day. And the reading in the book, the assigned homework, uh, will help get, guide you to these answers. For example, we talked about the metric system. Whenever you're doing a good test in science, we're gonna have to do good measurements. And in the metric system, one of the, 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 the unit of length, of course, is the meter. We'll talk a little bit more on the notes about why it's very, very important to use the metric system in science. Here in America, we still use feet, miles, quite often gallons, for example, for gasoline. Uh, but we want to talk a little bit about why it's important that scientists are all on the same page using a consistent system of measurement. So in your reading, you can find out the metric units for length, volume, and mass. And that reading comes up with this little symbol right here, the HW symbol that I mentioned in class. We keep an interactive student notebook because one of the things that we refer to quite often is previous days in the notebook. If you look at your notebook a year, or two years, three years from now, it's yours to keep and you'll do a lot of little abbreviations to yourself that make sense to you. One I always use is homework. Why? I write it on the board quite a bit and instead of me writing out the word homework all the time, I just do HW with a little circle around it and myself and students know, oh, that's homework. I should look for those HWs. That's a thing to do. Finally, in class, just do a little picture right here. Our experiment, what happened with our experiment today? Not sure if you can see it with the little iPhone screen I have going right now, but it basically says different weight, uh, different weighted objects fall at the same rate. Um, so based on the experiment so far, once again, not exact measurements, you know, counting to three and dropping out, not super exact, but our first experiment basically shows in class that if you have different weighted objects, they do fall at the same rate, which again, with Galileo supposedly dropping different weight objects from um, a tower in Italy. Um, we don't know if, if he actually did it from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, as some people say, but regardless, that was the heart of science, doing an actual experiment and testing it. That's why I gave that Feynman, uh, Feynman quote the other day about you might have a fantastic idea, but if it doesn't stand up to experiment, it's probably wrong. Finally, the last thing, if you can see this part of the board right here, you've got three other HWs. These are pretty easy HWs though. The first, a moon observation. I'm asking all the students to check out the moon this week if you can. We're looking for the moon in the sky. Now I know it's a little bit smoky and a little bit foggy here, but if you can go look at the moon, please do. And just do a quick observation on its shape and what time you saw it. The next one was reading the pages, the textbook pages one through 10. Uh, the PDF is available on Google Classroom of our textbook. If you want a hard copy of the textbook, those are also available here on campus. Um, the PDF is really um, easy to read through. However, hard copies are available of this textbook right here. And then finally, nice easy one here, a picture. You can draw it or you can take a snap a picture. 
just like you've seen in some of the Major League Baseball parks, they've got people's pictures put up on little cardboard cutouts. We're gonna have your pictures around this room right here. If you can see what I'm looking at, I'm looking at 32 empty desks right now, which is sad. I really wanna see you guys in person. Uh, it's a lot more fun doing science here in person with a loud classroom and people learning all together. Uh, of course, this is a reality right now while we try and get through this uh, COVID uh, pandemic, but we wanna make sure that you know, and when I take pictures of the classroom, this is your classroom, this is your science class. And again, whether it happens sometime over the next three trimesters or we have to wait till eighth grade year, looking so forward to seeing you guys on campus. I really have to tell you, I miss having the students and all of the live action that goes on in an actual science classroom you know, here going on. So we'll do the best we can with online. Uh, miss you guys in person, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all as soon as possible. Take care, and thanks for your attention during the online classes. Again, I'll get those notes posted at the Google Classroom. Bye-bye.